Okay, so this is an attempt to show you how to use SketchUp to make uh, a treasure box shape, something like this. We want to make it nice and fitted. We also want to make sure that it's going to work in the shop. So this is pre-visualizing uh, a project like the treasure box project. And I'll start with a brand new canvas. Uh, right from scratch. No. We'll start from scratch. And to begin with, for this project, I'm going to start at the origin and I'm going to draw the base of this thing and mock it up pretty quickly. I'm going to make a project that is going to be 4 by 4 inches. I'll zoom extents. And there's the base of what this thing is going to look like, its footprint. I know from experience that we want to make this thing about 3 inches tall, so I'm typing in a 3. Notice, by the way, when I type in these values, they show up in the bottom right corner. Hit the Enter key. At least I hope they do. Don't tell me I got that exactly right. Something's not right there. Try that again. 3, Enter. Ah, so that's three inch height. And I'll just confirm it by using the dimension tool and saying, okay, that's definitely four. And okay, that's definitely three. Got a good start on this. Now, the thickness of the wood that we'll be using can be displayed using this offset tool. So I'm going to choose to make a 0.75 inch width of wood. Once again, I'm going to type it in down here, 0.75. I said 0.7. Did it really not do it again? Control Z and try it again. Click. 0.75, ha, worked that time. And that gives us the thickness of wood. We're gonna have to plane the wood down to that size. And finally, I guess I'll get rid of this little bit in the middle, and I'm gonna push that down to the bottom so it's level with that edge. So we now have a hole down there. Okay, now, in putting this thing together, I'm going to start dressing this thing up to be a little bit more ornate. And I'm gonna use some guidelines to make this nice and accurate. So I'll use the, uh, the tape measure tool, and I'd like to put uh, something that is a quarter of an inch. I'm going to make a quarter inch bevel in this direction and in this direction. And I'm just eyeballing it down here. I don't even have to type the numbers. So I can put a nice round curve to it, something like this. And I'd like to use the follow me tool to trace this curve all the way around the outside. And the follow me tool is daunting at first, but once you get, a, get the hang of it, you know what? It's a pretty nice tool. And that gives us the curve that we were looking for there. I'm going to try some other little tricks on this thing to make things pretty. I kind of like to um, do some ornamentation. And I'm going to estimate where this thing should start. I could actually get a lot more accurate than this. But I'm going to estimate about here. And going in the green direction, I'll give it a little bull nose groove there. I think I would like to notch it in maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Now I've got to make sure I'm going in the green direction on this face. There it is. 16th of an inch in, maybe an eighth of an inch down. I'm looking in the bottom right corner to see my dimensions again. And seem to have done that, good. I think I would like to have something at the bottom, up a quarter of an inch. So I'll put my arc, I'm gonna put all my profiles and arcs and stuff in right off the bat. And it seemed to me that I could do one more, why don't I do one more arch down here? Can't remember exactly how I did it the first time, but I kinda like that, that effect. Again, I'm just kind of estimating about those bull noses. Hang on. Okay, so I've got everything that I want in here. Now, to get these things around the perimeter, this is going to be a little tricky. Maybe I can make it work like this. I'll try. Uh, if I use that follow me tool and push this thing around and... No, that's really looking squirrely, so I don't want to use that. Hmm, I wonder if I can use this one. Follow me needs an edge to follow, and I don't seem to have a lot of edges to follow here. Oh, there's one there. But it only starts about that far along, and it's got to be all the way around the outside. There are some good tricks if you... No, that didn't do it. The nice thing, the tricky thing here is I'd like to be able to see all the way around this outside. So I'm going to go to Styles, and I'm going to turn on the X-Ray so I can actually see through this thing. And hopefully that'll allow me to see all the edges that are the edges all the way around this thing clearly. And sure enough, I think I can. So now I can see this edge here. I can see an edge here. Doesn't seem to want to go with it though. I found this takes a lot of trial and error, and I should consult the videos to see if I can find them a little better. Undo. Just not doing it. Wow. What if we use this edge down here? Not nice. Wow. Huh. For some strange reason, that seemed to do it. Okay, I'll keep continue using that edge down there at the bottom then, I guess. So I use this edge, this edge, this edge, 
this edge. And as long as you take it all the way around, well, it seems to do it. Change my angle slightly. This edge. This edge. This edge. This edge. Did it. Oh, I guess I want to do one more. Of course I do. This edge. This edge. This edge. This edge. And it didn't do it. <laughs> like I say, trial and error. Control Z is your friend at this point in time. Seeing if you can make it all the way around. Try again. There. Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't break the chain. Oh, those lines are too close together and I can't see. Did it do it? No, not all the way. Escape. Control Z. I'm not giving up yet. I'm going to try it again. Hello, orbit tool. This edge. This edge. Keep the link going all the way around. Make sure you can see. Ah, all the way to the end, all the way to the end. Did I do it? Yay, I did it. Awesome. Now I'll turn off the x-ray mode. Phew, that was a lot of work. Turn off x-ray so I can actually see what I did. And I think I'm also going to start uh, erasing some of those guidelines because I really don't need them. They get kind of messy. Sure, get rid of those dimensions. So there's all the way around the outside. And I've, you know, with a, a few grooves, uh, made something that looks from very ordinary to, to something kind of extraordinary. Now here's the next little thing. The lid is a, is a real secret to this thing and making it look good. And so I want to make a decent looking lid, but I better know what dimensions I'm going to make this out of. And to figure this out, I'm going to use my dimension tool and figure out if I have a lid that is as wide as this outside perimeter, it should fit really nicely. And that's three and a half inches. Okay. This one here, this is two and a half inches. So if I have a three and a half inch around the outside, and then if I could make a little plug that was two and a half inches in, a distance of one inch, well, actually a half inch between there and there, I should get a decent lid. So watch the magic here, and we'll make a lid that fits perfectly. First off, I have to make 3.5 by 3.5. There's the size of the outside perimeter of the lid. And I'm going to pull this up. I know the stock is going to be 0.75. I already got that planned. And now what I want to do is I want to make a plug that's offset. So it's offset by half inch to reduce the size from 3.5 to 2.5. That's a half inch there and a half inch over there. So offset, click this. 0.5 gives me the accurate offset. And I'm going to push this up. I know about an eighth of an inch is all I need. So I'll push this up by about an eighth of an inch. One slash eight. Perfect. And now this plug will fit, should fit perfectly in the top of this thing. I'll confirm it. I'm going to get rid of these dimensions because they're just messy. And I'll prove it. I'll prove it right now. I'll double click this lid. Triple click it if need be. I'm going to match this corner up. And I'll move this corner so it matches up right there and now you can see that lid fits perfectly around the ups the outside of this and if it doesn't it's because I didn't line it up I didn't move it perfectly so I'll try again grab this move it right there now it's perfect and I got myself a lid that absolutely fits. and I can use the same follow me uh, process to carve this lid out and try to make it look a little bit more ornate but there's the basics of doing this thing uh, one last thing I might do is I might put the floorboard I'm gonna router out uh, a rabbit groove on the inside of this thing and insert a floorboard. So I'm going to get this absolutely bang on accurate by dragging up a guideline here in the blue direction. Eighth of an inch up, good. And then another one about a quarter of an inch up. So I'll have an eighth of an inch floorboard in here. I'm going to draw two lines. Like that. And like that. And then I'll get myself into a view where I can actually pull this ledge across here using the push-pull tool. So I can seal that up, make it mesh with that, and I now have the floorboard pretty much to scale. And I'll work on the lid a little bit more, and then I'm done. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, that's all there is to it. That's how you make a treasure box in 3D.